you can design your wedding dress with Procreate and then take it to a dressmaker and then discuss the actual garment construction and how you're going to make it. But the idea can come from you and you can create it on, on Procreate. I'm using a template here which has style lines, guidelines, and it shows you the lines along the body and it maps the anatomy. So you've got the empire line below the bust. That is usually the smallest part of the woman's body and a great place to send the focus of the eye. And then you've got the widest part of the woman's body, which is the low hips. And it's good not to actually place any focal points on that and move your focal points just away. By using Procreate, it's easy to find those parts and map out the geography of the dress to then go to a dressmaker and make it. So putting in things like a princess line because it makes it easier to make the dress and to fit the dress when it comes to making it. Putting in a focal point like a blue sash so you've got something borrowed something blue all up around the part where the eye is where you want the eye to be drawn and then by using the lines on the croquis I can find where the cap sleeve will go to which is the bust line and make a beautiful wedding dress this is in the style of Vera Wang her typical and the most iconic wedding dress that fits most people the best this is one of the best designs you can have for a wedding dress with the drop waist so it makes the figure extremely feminine and the princess lines means that you draw attention away from the widest part of the body while still maintaining the focus on those curves and then you've got at the high waist the empire line you have a focal point drawing everyone to the to the thinnest part of the body and then underneath you still get that beautiful ball gown flounce with the enormous drop waist and that can also turn into a mermaid if you want but I think it looks great gathered like that and so by using this you can see it's just easy to find your center points and find where you are on the body to then draw the dress of your dreams this one's actually inspired I wanted to do an off the shoulder because I think they're always beautiful with those beautiful ribbons that maybe turn into a bow at the center front. I was inspired to draw this by dress worn by Halle Berry at the Oscars in the early 2000s where she had a lace bodice and then a, a satin skirt. It looked incredible and it's a great way to design around the body. You've got a diagonal line going across the stomach and across the hips, across the widest parts, an area where people often want to obscure and take focus away from. You've got a diagonal line going across, a gatherer at one hip. There's no big expanses of unadorned fabric in one place it's all got the eye traveling around the dress and it looks fantastic obviously that drop shoulder around the arms that's great for the back of the arms and around the back and then you've got a sweetheart neckline you can use the symmetry tool if you want but also when you're using guides like this and I've got a center line right down the middle I can draw up to that and out from it and then know that if I duplicate and then flip it horizontally then I'm going to get an exact match and it means that it makes it easier to draw because you're just drawing one side and not thinking about the other side the symmetry tool is really good for that that's in your drawing guide on procreate there's a drawing guide and you can put on symmetry and choose where you place the center point and then draw from that and of course it's symmetry it can be two-way four-way and you can make mandalas with with all the other ways but if you're not going to do that and you have a center line like on a template like this you can draw up to that center line and then when you flip it it's going to bring back to the center line everything that you've drawn inspired this is inspired by um princess grace of monaco and what she wore in the mid 50s for her wedding to the prince of monaco and it inspired the dress of the duchess of cambridge when she married prince william you can see i put a slightly different color above that sweetheart neckline and down the the sleeves that's to show that that's a transparent lace underneath it is the bodice with the sweetheart neckline and you can see that I mean the lace is going to go over the top so you can see that it's transparent and the yoke is just bare skin and then underneath is a bodice it's a great I'm doing lace this way so it's just a little scribble around and it creates the look of lace without having to draw the actual lace because you're not doing that you're trying to show someone how to make your dress you're going this is lace here so i'm just going to do a little scribble and show you how to do it one of the most beautiful dresses in the world so stunning and timeless you could wear this today you could wear it 10 years ago 30 years ago and you could wear it 70 years ago when it was actually worn for the first time 
a great way for using your template is an anchor so you can swoosh out and make a giant bias cut satin dress like this you can use the body to sweep out from it so you've got your anchor points and then you can you can represent how you want this dress to be which is a flowy beautiful dress in that either 1920s and 1930s style so a tea dress or a madeleine vna style bias cut satin or in the late 90s and now it is certainly a time for bias cut satins and bias cut slips a stunning way to do a dress and then all i do is i come in with the gloaming brush on a slightly different tint not very much at all like i just scooched it down a little bit and then came in with the gloaming brush which is like a copic marker and it comes free with procreate it's in it's in there when you get it and that gives you the look of that that satin flow because it's not so harsh it, it's got the edges the edges sort of fall away and it, and it ebbs and flows from a point to a wide brush so it looks really good and is great for depicting something like satin and that's what if if you're in a design house the artists are still using copic markers to do the fashion illustrations do these these would be called roughs and what these are they're just idea after idea after idea and trying to get them out there and that's what they would use and this is i think the best it's the closest thing to a copic marker that i've found while drawing digitally and i enjoy that because that's how i did my fashion illustrations again i'm using that symmetry but not this symmetry tool i'm just drawing something and then flipping it horizontally because it's going to line up because I've used a template to find out where it is. So I've done these beautiful early 19th century puff sleeves. So you think of uh, Bridgerton, that's kind of set in the 1820s. It's the, it's just before Queen Victoria in the, the empire, when the empire line was around. So when you had dresses falling from just under the bus, and they had these beautiful Jane Austen style sleeves, very romantic. And with a square neckline, which is very 90s, it looks fantastic. And also, this is great for all body types. You're covering where the arm meets the chest, so you're not getting any lines there. You're covering the back of the arm. You have a nice square. Decolletage is framed with that square neckline, and it looks fantastic. So you don't have to have lots of cleavage, but you've still got that decolletage showing. And then it's cinched in at the waist, and then comes out just to a regular pencil skirt. Fantastic for nearly everybody. And then if you apply a lace on top, which if you've watched some of my earlier videos, I go into quite a lot of depth on how to do this with the clipping mask. It's such a great tool. So I grabbed this lace from Pinterest. I subtract the parts of the lace that I don't want. That can be a bit tricky and it can take a bit of time and some of them just won't do it, but some of them will. You use the automatic selection tool in the selection and then you're just dragging and you just have to, it's just trial and error to work out how hard you need to have that selection. And if you've gone too far, you've gone too far, but always make a copy so you can come back to the, the original and try again. And when you do get it, it makes this fantastic. This is great if you're taking it to a seamstress and you say, okay, I've got this piece of lace and I want it to end here and do this there and do that there. You can take in a picture of your lace and do that. If you're just saying this part is going to be lace, like the earlier drawings, then just scribble and put in lace and then you can have a swatch of the lace next to it. But if you've got a particular lace or a lace applique and you need to show them exactly what you want it to do in the exact spot, then using a clipping mask on top of the design is a great way to, to depict that. I've been aware of Pei obviously since, I don't know, maybe the early teens and I went to her exhibition in Singapore when it was on at the Asian Civilizations Museum and it just changed it changed everything it changed when you look at what she designed she she has the Rose Studio in Beijing she speaks French but she's Chinese and she's a couturier the first couturier of China she makes devastating gowns the most intricate things the kind of stuff that would be on par with the House of Worth and Carlos Sur something from the early 20th century she's doing now because she has the workforce who can hand sew and hand embroider these these gowns. So I went to the exhibition in Singapore and I just lost my mind. It was unbelievable. 
you would know her from the Met Gala when Rihanna wore the omelette or the peach dress with that huge flowing train that looked like a giant omelette in a pan or, the, or, a, or a big pizza. And she wore it to the Met Gala 10 years ago. This is the designer and I've got her, I've got all books that I could find on her. I'm always trying to find more out about her because she just makes the most amazing thing. One of her biggest client bases is the Chinese bridal market. So she makes the most amazing bridal outfits. Of course, in China, in East Asia and in South Asia, red and gold are traditional colors that you would wear at a wedding because they're auspicious. They are the best colors. And at a wedding, these are the colors of the bride and the groom. Everyone wears red and gold. And so on her outfits, sometimes they're dresses, sometimes they're ensembles. She, this is inspired by one that I saw in the museum where she had these, I'll say like a Japanese kimono sleeve, but obviously it's, it's probably referencing Han Fu, so traditional Chinese clothing, where the kimono came from over like 1500 years ago, ages ago it, it came into Japan, but even before then the Chinese were making sleeves like this, and so it comes from this little beautiful red jacket completely hand embroidered with golden thread and silver thread and and uh, red silk thread and oh, it was it, it was just incredible and then she has underneath it the skirts of the traditional Ming I think it's a Ming style skirt it is or it might be Qing but it's got this apron front it's called this this front that comes down that falls down as a separate piece and that's got the intricate embroidery there of the phoenix this is the emblem of the empress and the symbol of women so the the man is a dragon the king the emperor is the dragon and the empress the woman is the phoenix or the peacock the mythical bird like like in most cultures the the phoenix represents something to do with with femininity and womanhood and it stood on this mannequin and the way that it leaned back the kimono sleeves fell down and they were just dead straight it was absolutely ravishing and then next to it she had another one and so you've got red and gold that's the traditional color but this one moved the red into vermilion so almost an, an orange and then its contrast color was the lightest sea blue and so she had these seed pearls you can see that i've got the the water embroidery down there that's the depiction of water it's waves around the edges there that was done in seed pearls of blue and white and silver and then within that there were golden seed pearls made up goldfish which are auspicious as well and you often see their imagery around a wedding um a wedding outfit because fish is a homonym for prosperity like money hair they're all homonyms so they have a name in chinese that sounds like fortune or money or fish or hair so these things become auspicious because they sound like that and they're written differently but they all sound the same uh, so they had goldfish and then you might have something like mandarin ducks two ducks means a couple because they stay together for life uh, you would have cranes their longevity you would have bamboo because that um, flourishes and is, is strength and it survives the winter as does pine as does plum it's a whole different world especially uh, I'm an Australian I, I, I'm especially if you grow up in the west I grew up in Australia you don't really learn about this and then when you do You've entered in a whole new world and it's the most exciting thing you've ever seen. She does white wedding dresses and she does white wedding ensembles as well. But what really draws me in is this. Looking to the east and seeing seeing what else you can do. Isn't it just amazing? And you have the symbol of double happiness. There's jade. There's It's incredible. There you go. What are you going to draw? What's your favourite style? I can't wait to see. I hope this helped as well to Zalia.